Is audiophile snobbery and snake oil ruining the audio industry for future generations? That's the question we're going to answer after the intro. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delasala with Audioholics. Today I want to talk about the dirty side of the audio business. The side that's ruining the reputation of the term audiophile. In my opinion, a lot of this audiophile snobbery and snake oil has been putting a black cloud over the audio business. It's kind of the Sith Lord, if you will, of audio. I want to give you a personal experience of what we've just been going through as an example, and then we'll talk more about this. So last year, we covered the Florida Audio Expo show, as you know, and we gave them an overall positive experience. It was their first show. We really enjoyed the demo rooms. There were some great audio products there, some great people. We met some really nice um, audio files. A lot of youngsters, a lot of Generation Y and Generation Z. Um, it was just a good experience. But what, what kind of ruined it for me was the fact that there were companies there still promoting garbage snake oil. One in particular, when I was in the Von Schweikert room, is they have their own branded cables called Master Build. And I looked at these cables and not only were they elevating them off the floor with their cable elevators, but the price of the cables, $70,000 for a pair of cables, was more money than the speakers that were being demoed. And I talked to a couple of reps there. I go, why do you guys still do this? And they acted oblivious. They actually believed, they acted like they believed in their own voodoo. They were telling me about how the cables need to be lifted off the floor to stop the static electricity. How to, how to strand jumping jumps one wire to the other so they stop strand jumping. They literally make shit up. I don't know if they do it on the flyer or if it's a concerted effort among all of these uh, snake oil companies, I'm sorry, cable companies. So they literally make this stuff up and they sell it to you as if they believe it. And I kind of made a little joke about it in our Von Schweiker video. I try to be as nice as I can. Well, I've come to find out that after that video was published, Florida Audio Expo dropped us as a sponsor, as a media sponsor from their show. And I was really uh, surprised by this because we put forth good effort for, for them last year promoting their event, but they told us the reason why they dropped us, and they didn't even call us audioholics, they called us alcoholics, like really being derogatory towards our, our brand name. So they said the reason why they dropped us as a media sponsor was because of our controversial views on cables. And I thought to myself, I go, controversial? So since when does objective science count as controversial? Unfortunately, we're living in an era of fake news, apparently, and it's really surrounding the audio field. And to me, I could deal with the fact that we're not a media sponsor. As Groucho Marx says, I never wanted to be a member of a, comp of, a, of a group that would have me as their member. And I'm sure I screwed up that quote, but it was something like that. So I never really, I never really fit into the audiophile community because I like to use science. I like to measure performance. I like to take things apart and see how they work. And for the last 20 years, it's been a struggle for audioholics because we're one of the few audio press left that objectively measure and analyze audio performance and also verify or invalidate manufacturer claims. And I really think it's important to have a free press to do that. I think it's important to promote the truth and the science of audio. And I noticed a lot of people uh, at these shows and, and just talking to people in general, uh, these young budding audiophiles that want to get into the audio field, they get turned off by this. They're like, well, I could never be an audiophile because I can't afford to spend 10 grand on speaker cables or I can't put 40 bass traps in my room. It's not just the audio cables. You can get snake oil and, and acoustic treatments as well. It's anything in audio when it's taken out of context and they put too much priority on one item can really get you in trouble. And I think we owe it to the community to pass the torch on to the next generation to get rid of this BS, get rid of this nonsense, and focus on what, what is important in the audio business. And what's important in audio is you have to have good speaker placement, you have to have good room acoustics, you have to have good setup, and you gotta focus more on that than these audio tweaks, like sticking a, tu a metal tube on top of a speaker to lower its resonance or, or to elevate your cables off the floor. 
none of that stuff matters. That's all BS. And I'm going to keep doubling down on this and I'm going to keep pushing because I want as many people that are viewing our videos to understand what really matters in audio. And I really believe that the audiophile term should not be exclusive to somebody spending a lot of money in audio. I really believe that you can get good audio experience without spending a lot of money. In fact, we've been giving so many recommendations lately on budget speakers, budget tower speakers, budget DACs. You don't need to spend a lot of money these days. The laws of diminishing returns have really narrowed down on a lot of components, especially cables, okay? We've done tons of articles and videos on cables. You don't need to spend a lot of money on cables. Don't listen to their so-called science. Their science is never verifiable. It's never peer reviewed. It's never in an AES journal. They don't have any staffed engineers actually writing this stuff. It's just marketing stuff. They're, it's like they're taking a college textbook on the chapter called Skin Effect. And they're trying to apply it to speaker cables as if it matters. And it doesn't matter. And this is why we have engineering principles that are peer reviewed that work in our industry. They work in every discipline of our industry, but somehow the audio industry is exempt from it. And we got to bring this reality back. We got to bring the truth back in audio. So guys, I'd like to hear your comments down below. Do you agree with me? Do you think that this audio file snobbery and snake oil is just a dark cloud on audio that we need to unveil? And we need to get the young people involved in audio. We need to get them to understand how to get an audiophile experience using legitimate science, using legitimate setup, making sensible recommendations in audio components as opposed to this voodoo crap with the cables and the religion of, of these tweaks that really don't add up to any type of measurable performance or reality for that matter. So I'd like to hear your comments down below. Please don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell notification. That way you get notices when vi videos like this drop. Tell me your favorite snake oil thing that you heard in the audio field in the last decade or so. I'd love to hear those claims. Maybe we'll do a video debunking them. Well, until next time, my friends, keep listening. This one. Should I save it or should I do it? Are you recording? Yeah. Okay. Is audiophile snobbery? No, stop it.